Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome back to another episode of Page to Screen. In this series, I take a Cuttick book and look at all the different film and TV adaptations that there have been of it. In this episode, we're going to be looking at Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. If you'd like to be kept in the loop as to which books are going to be page to screenified in the next year, you can go to my Twitter page, at um, Lauren Whitehead, and I will be posting shortly a schedule of all of the upcoming episodes. There's going to be a new episode episode every six weeks um, so if you would like to read some of the books on the list or watch a couple of adaptations um, prior to the video coming out then you can go over to Twitter and have a cheeky look. Today we're looking at Sense and Sensibility, there will obviously be spoilers um, for the story throughout this video just to make sure that everyone is up to speed. Sense and Sensibility is about the Dashwood family, Mrs Dashwood and her three daughters Eleanor, Marianne and Margaret. When their father dies their house is completely inherited by their elder half-brother and they have to move to Devon and live in a cottage. And the story mainly follows the trials and tribulations of the love lives of the sisters Eleanor and Marianne. Eleanor with her her brother's wife's brother Edward Ferris and Marianne with the dastardly Mr Willoughby and later Colonel Brandon. So the first adaptation that I watched was from 1981 and this was a TV um, serialisation. Now this was not a great start for me. I'm a little bit biased against these kind of adaptations. After doing several episodes of the Page to Screen series, I've seen several TV adaptations from the 1980s of a lot of different classic books and they're all very, very similar and they're all, in my opinion, very, very bad. <laughs> what I think this series struggles with is really getting personality from the characters that sounds like such a, a big issue and it is a big issue and I don't really understand why they fail to do that but this adaptation is very very slow very very quiet and the acting for me just feels so flat and I did find even the editing and the shots taken and considering they're supposed to be in the countryside and it's supposed to be very very beautiful I found that quite lacking and even the staging seemed quite unimaginative I I would compare it to a play that just happens to be on the TV because it doesn't have any of the elements that you would expect in a TV series but it's not even as good as a play because there's no energy in any of the delivery of the lines it just very much feels like each person is saying their line and then waiting and listening to the other line and then they'll say theirs and I just got nothing from it I didn't care about any of the characters and it honestly goes for all of them <laughs> just so, sorry to start the video at such a negative review but I couldn't be bothered with this series at all the next adaptation, however, let's be honest, this is the reason I wanted to do a page to screen on Sense and Sensibility, and that is the 1995 film starring Emma Thompson and Kate Winslet. Having reread the book um, so close to watching this film again, it made me really appreciate how well this has been adapted. I find it's always a bit more of a difficulty adapting a book to a movie than it is to a TV series because you have so much more time in a TV series to really get into the nitty gritty of the plot, whereas in a film you're, you're quite pushed for time. I think this film does it just beautifully. They do cut out characters, but they're all the characters that do feel quite superfluous. And it's so impressive how they managed to really use Jane Austen's words. It really feels like Sense and Sensibility, even though conversations have, have obviously been condensed and several things have been put into the same scene, for example. But it just works and it's beautiful. And there's not a performance I can fault in this. Emma Thompson is just wonderful as Eleanor. The final scene when Edward comes back to her and um, says and asks her to marry him is just so beautiful. I've, I've watched it so many times and even watching it this time I was crying. It's just so wonderful and Kate Winslet as Marianne as well. She's just got her personality so right in my opinion. <laughs> Can you tell I liked this film? There are a couple of things that, that maybe could have done with some more explanation, especially Marianne falling in love with Colonel Brandon at the end of the film. That always feels rushed to me and it doesn't really feel genuine. It feels like she just marries him because, you know, he's there and you can't have Willoughby anymore, which obviously is not the case, but because there's not enough time to watch their relationship develop properly, 
that always just seems, a, that just seems a little bit messy for me. But aside from that, I think Mrs. Jennings is hilarious. Imelda Staunton as her <laughs> daughter Charlotte is wonderful, as is Hugh Laurie as her husband. It's just a cast of, everyone is brilliant. Everyone is brilliant in this film. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> Shall we just stop the video here? I then watched a Tamil movie from 2000, which I apologise in advance, is called Kandu Kondane, Kandu Kondane. I have no idea if that's how you pronounced it. I'm really sorry. I wasn't sure about this film going in, and I think that's because the version that I was watching, I don't know if it's just the version that I had, the translation of the subtitles wasn't very good at all. Um, it was a very, very literal translation of what they were saying in Tamil, which doesn't always convey the correct meaning in English. So it was a little bit of a struggle. Um, and at first I was thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this. I don't think it's really going to be Sense and Sensibility. Um, but the more I watched it, the more I re I've really got into it. <laughs> I, could, I really enjoyed this, actually. This obviously takes Sense and Sensibility and sets it in Southern India and into the present day. What works quite well in this film is that even in present day India, you have a very strict, rigid social class structure and there's also the focus on getting daughters married, which means that the plot of Sense and Sensibility is really easily transferred to that framework. And a lot of what happens in the book doesn't necessarily need to be updated because it still works within um, Indian society. So Eleanor and Marianne are Somia and Meenakshi. Somia has a very on-off relationship happening with a film director who is the Edward Ferrers of the film and Min actually falls in love with like a bank I don't even know what he is he like he he runs a very successful bank um, and then it all goes wrong and every and everyone starts losing their money but that's the kind of Willoughby character and then there's Captain Bala who has lost his leg in combat and therefore feels unworthy of Min actually's attentions and what I was really impressed by with this film was that it really felt like its own creation it didn't feel like it was harking back to Austin a lot it absolutely was a Tamil film there were lots of songs in it and it was very, very fun and um, and funny. But then at the same time, you you really did get some serious emotion in there, and it had a lot more guts and a lot. It was a lot more hard hitting than I expected it to be. Then I watched something which really it would be better for everyone if I didn't include. But then then I'd be lying to myself and lying to you. And that is a film from two thousand and six, which is called Material Girls. I think really this is just like a film which is based on Sense and Sensibility. It's not an adaptation of Sense and Sensibility. Um, Hilary and Hayley Duff play two heiresses of a makeup company. Um, their father dies and then they realise the makeup company goes bust or something and then they lose all their money. Um, and really it's a story about rich girls who then become poor and they're both really stupid and then, you know, and then they like try and get their money back. And that's like, that's the story. It's an Although in Sense and Sensibility it is a bit of a riches to rags um, plot, I never feel like that's the moral of Sense and Sensibility. I feel like it's them learning about love and like Marianne understanding about her emotions. Like there's so much more to it. It's not about them dealing with their poverty. And this is just about them like losing money and being really spoiled and I just, ugh. Oh. It was just so rough. It wasn't even a good film of its type. I think that's what my problem was. I've no no issue with kind of lightweight romantic comedies or, you know, I guess it's a kid's film really or a film for young girls probably. But I didn't think it was like even good for, for that type of film. So crap really. Next we have a beautiful production from 2008 which is a TV adaptation um, starring Charity Wakefield and Hattie Morahan as Eleanor and Marianne. This was a three part series so we get three hours which means you have a lot more time to expand upon various plot points, um, certainly much more than you get in a film. Apart from merely having more time to take with character development, I feel like the interpretations of the characters in themselves are absolutely wonderful in this in this production. Charity Wakefield in particular is an absolutely fantastic Marianne. She's a very intelligent Marianne. I think it's a fine line portraying someone who's passionate and wild as silly, and Marianne shouldn't be silly. Um, she's, she's just romantic, and I think uh, Charity Wakefield gets this absolutely spot on. Someone else who I really enjoyed was Dan Stevens as Edward Ferrers. Um, comparing him a kind of like for like with Hugh Grant um, in the 1995 film, he's much much less stumbly and unsure of himself. He's just, he's quite reserved and very polite, but he's got something a little bit more about him, which I quite like. And I, I really, I really felt like you had proper time 
to see his and Eleanor's relationship develop. One of the things that this series does do brilliantly is bring into play Miss Williams, who is Mr Willoughby's um, love that he ran off with and then abandoned with a child. And she's obviously spoken of in Sense and Sensibility, but you never see her, you never hear from her point of view. And in this series, you she appears and you kind of get a sense of the sadness and a sense of how awful the thing that Willoughby has done to her is because she's completely ruined now. Um, and it, it makes it more shocking, I think, for a modern audience kind of seeing that rather than just um, hearing on the wind that he's done something terrible. Something else that it does a lot better than the 1995 film, just to compare them directly, is that you really get the Captain Brandon Marianne relationship. You really see that she's changing her mind about him and she's growing up as a person and they leave some time for them to get to know each other and for their relationship to develop. So at the end you're genuinely happy for them because you've seen how much he's been taking care of her and how much he's loved her this whole time and you see a real change of heart in Marianne. This series takes the time to elaborate on lots of things so you get all of the characters in there that are cut out from the 1995 film um, and you get a bit of back story from some people and you see some scenes that aren't in the book and um, which generally um, I like however there's one aspect of this series which is just a niggling annoyance for me they make quite a big thing of the relationship between Colonel Brandon and Willoughby right right from the very first episode there's an animosity between them and my feeling is when I watch the film that Colonel Brandon knows what Willoughby has done to Miss Williams and that is why he doesn't like him or that's why he doesn't trust him with Marianne. Um, but I feel like this is wrong. I think Colonel Brandon doesn't know that Willoughby is Miss Williams' lover until he's already found her. It's only at that point that he learns, much, much, much later on in Marianne and Willoughby's acquaintance, that Willoughby is the, is the cause of this girl's downfall. So that there should subsist such a bad feeling between him and Brandon from the first couple of episodes, I think is a little bit foreshadowy. And also it paints Willoughby in not a very nice light, which again, I feel like as a viewer, you should like Willoughby. Like it should be a surprise when Willoughby turns out to not be all that um, he appears to be. You shouldn't see any kind of darker side of his personality that early on, I don't think. So I feel like they, they maybe went a little bit too far in elaborating that part of the story. There are only three that I found that were absolutely literal adaptations of exactly the book, and that is the 1981 TV series, the 1995 film, and this 2008 series. And when we compare them all together, I actually think I like the 1995 film and this series, but in very different ways. But I think both of them are very accomplished um, adaptations and they do slightly different things um, w with the book, but it just very much, it feels like Austin, it feels like a very true representation. And I don't think I could fault any of the performances in either of them. I think all of the representations of character are very, very good in their own ways. But finally, I watched another modern adaptation from 2011, and this is called From Prada to Nada, <laughs> which is another kind of chick flicky kind of movie um, about two rich girls in LA who, um, who lose all of their money and then they become poor. Um, after watching Material Girls, I didn't have very high hopes for this film at all. I was so surprised by how good it was. I, re I really, really enjoyed this film. I'd never even heard of it until I started researching Sense and Sensibility adaptations. But it had so much more heart and it was so... It was such a better written and better directed film than I expected it to be. Nora and Mary are Mexican-Americans who live in LA. Their father dies and then on his death they discover that they had an illeg illegitimate um, older brother and they also discover that their father is in complete debt. So they do have the riches to rags issue. They have to go and live with an aunt in the east side of LA which is all nasty. But this isn't just about them coming to terms with the lack of money. It's about them learning about their family, learning to embrace their Mexican culture, to not judge people by appearances, to learn about working hard. Like there's just, there's so much in this film that I completely did not expect. And you do have the kind of cheesy romantic side of it, uh, but it also, like I said, has so much heart and they actually really bridge their relationship with their brother that they didn't know that they had. And it does something similar to what Candor Condé and Candor Condé does in that it feels like its own film. It completely takes sense of sensibility, puts it in it within its own world, but at the same time it absolutely still feels like Sense and Sensibility and you can see all of the plot 
working and overall I really enjoyed it I had it on in the background while I was doing something else and I stopped what I was doing so I could sit down and actually really really pay attention to it because I was really enjoying it um that being said it's not the best film in the world I wouldn't suggest you go out and watch it for its film merit but I certainly wouldn't dismiss it and if you enjoy that kind of rom-com romantic film um I think this is a really nice one of its genre so there we go some hits and some misses there I'd love to hear from you if you've watched any of these adaptations or if there's any that I couldn't find, there's always a couple of adaptations that for some reason they're not available in my country or I can't find them online or whatever, so I think there probably are some that I missed. Nonetheless, I hope that you enjoyed this discussion and let me know in the comments which adaptation of Sense and Sensibility is your favourite one. And I will see you in my next video. Bye! theory for why we find this period in our lives so difficult is that we've been trained to compare ourselves to our peers all the time at school. You have a very clear set of expectations at school and you know how to achieve them and once you've achieved them you get maybe marks out of 10 and you understand your place in that society.